Right. Dictionary of Tupian Chigo. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Every time I look at it, it's just like endless possibilities. It's just a little green thing. I could type in anything and I'm always just typing in random things and just crazy stuff comes up, you know? Like if I type in v.tr, I can get all of the transitive verbs in this dictionary. Very useful. Um, and it goes on forever. Look at this. There's so many transitive verbs. If I want to get intransitive verbs, I can buy v.intr. You got to put a space because Navajo wrote it with a space. Humans make mistakes. Um, but then you get all the intransitive verbs. That's really cool. All of these verbs, uh, if they're labeled as V I N T R in the dictionary, or if it's labeled as V T R, these are all first class verbs. Okay. And we've talked about those in the grammar. Um, but I call them first class and second class because that's what Navajo calls them. But some people in the study of Tupi have, uh, not some people, most people, they recognize that it has what in linguistics is called a stative active split. Um, does anyone know what that means? Like when you have action and stative verbs? Yes, exactly. It's a split on the verbs. So that's basically what first class and second class are. You've got your active verbs and your stative verbs, right? Um, and so stative verbs are going to be your adjectives. Because what is an adjective, really? It's a stative verb. Um, the only difference is we use a copula. That's what we call it in English. The, is that what it's called? Copula? I always forget these words. But it's, it's basically the linguistic term for the verb to be. We use something as the verb to be. Um, I am. You are. We'll say eh. And sometimes the copula is no, right? You crazy. You crazy. The adjective has a null copula inside of it. When I tell you, you crazy, right? That's not proper English, but it is proper African-American English. Super fine to say that. You crazy. And it's a, you can say that in Southern English. There's all kinds of English dialects which allow you to do that. So it shouldn't be too far-fetched to think about the idea that we can have a subject and then we can have a, a clause and we can relate them just by saying them next to each other. Crazy, you. You crazy. It doesn't really matter the order that I put it in. The information still enters into your mind, right? I wonder if we have doidu in here. Let's see. This is how I, this is how I find new words. Look at this. Doidu. I have never seen this word in my life. Locura. Mania. And it says it's, it's a noun. It says it's ungaingav. Angai gaiva. That basically means anga means soul. And then uh, aiva is like bad, bad soul. Right? Wait, how, how do you translate this, uh, Mateus? Is he still here? He might have left. I would translate it like you did, as just like you did it. But I think there is, I don't know, I think there is one more word inside yeah. it that I don't know. I don't know what it is either. It could be the uh, reduplication like we were talking about today. Like you really, you have a really bad soul. Two bad souls. I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of something like that. So so tupi is cool because words are kind of built up like that. They're, they're agglutinated. You can take two words and stick them together and make more words like, like it's nobody's business. Um, and that's like kind of a better way of talking than with sentences in tupi. Uh, so if I want to say like, I'm crazy, I'm crazy, soy loco, right? We, we do it like that. We say, she angaingaib, angaingaib, <laughs> say that five times fast, angaingaib, angaingaib, angaingaib. You can say it to yourself, you don't have to turn on your microphone. But you notice here how it, it doesn't have an A at the end? Um, it's because when it's a noun, it's gonna have an a. It's gonna end in a vowel, um, and if it ends in a non-tonic a, then if you want to make it an adjective, then you just take it away. But when I say adjective, I really mean stative verb, because we have that active stative split. Because with an adjective, usually we have a copula or we have um, 
or we or we use it in composition. We can use this in composition, so it can become like an adjective. Um, but that's too much. So basically, saying she angangaib angangaib man, this is a hard word to say, isn't it? Angangaib. If you say that, you're basically saying me crazy, me crazy, right? And the is am is a copula. It's a null copula. It means that it's a part of the verb. The verb it implies that, and it's it's specifically the way that we inflect it implies that. If we put an a at the end, this she angangai ba becomes my crazy, my my craziness. Right, it becomes a noun and it becomes possessive, um, or yeah, kind of like that. So um, that's kind of a feel for the for the for the difference between the active and the stative verbs. So if we go here into the grammar uh, and we jump down to roots, I wrote a little bit more in this section. As as we learn things, I'm going to learn what I wrote enough and what I didn't write enough. And I'm, I'm gonna be adding things to these. So we'll revisit these sections. We've already gone over this, but there's more stuff in here now. Um, so roots have three characteristics. Uh, you can see they're, they're either transitive, first or second class, or they're pluriform. Those are the three characteristics that a root can have. And when I say root, I mean like a dictionary word. Like the thing you look up in a dictionary when you're trying to find, um, you know, the definition. You're not going to look up any inflected forms like past tense or present tense or you or me. Um, so let's look at transitivity. Uh, can we see who's in here? Let's see. Gabriel, can you tell me what transitivity is? Maybe not. Can you, Talu? Sorry, I was I was distracted because the student was oh. asking me about some. You're confusion. teaching while I'm, I'm so teaching. Sorry. That's not allowed in the. <laughs> can um, I answer? Yeah, you sorry, can answer. I was, I was chewing on my food, so I, I couldn't unmute. <laughs> no problem. I got uh, you both off guard. Transitivity is like. A verb that is transitive takes an object, takes uh, yeah, they takes an object, and the intransitive verbs do not. They are actions on itself, on themselves. So like an intransitive verb just just like happens to the uh, or with the uh, subject, while the transitive verb is more of a thing that you do to something. Yeah, you definitely, do. definitely. It's a it's a great description. So I, I gave you two examples here. We've got ishe asalsu. A -e. I love him or her or she or they, um, whatever you want to put there, because the third person in, and you can even do plural, you know, there's no gender and there's no plurals. So nobody gets to argue about uh, gender neutrality because it's baked into the language. It's nice, huh? Ishe um, anyang. I ran or I run. Verbs in tupi don't have tense. We learn the tense based on the context. So if I say, uh, I want to show you these two words. It's a really cool thing about uh, to be, these, these couple words. Let's make this smaller again. If I search for oji, how do we say today, today in to be? Well, when we're talking about time related to the future, the, the time that has yet to arrive, the rest of the day, we're talking about kori. Kori means today, but it hasn't happened yet. Now we've got uh, oyei, which is the time related to the past of today. So the time today that has already passed. So we are always in between these two things. We're always in between kori and oyei. And, and, and the thing that's in between these two things, the past and the present, would be ko'ud. Ko'ud. Looks like this. Ko, ud. This means agora, now, hoje, right? So if I give you, um, 
Let me open my text edit. Oh, that's not the text edit. Okay, perfect. Make a new one of these. So let's do some experiments with these words. So um, if I go up to here. So given these words, we have uh, kori, which is today, um, to come. We have today past, which is oye e, and then we have now, which is ko u. And I would like each one of you to try to finish this sentence. Today I ran. Today I will run. I am running now. Okay. Can you guys guess how we're going to say that based on this example right here, we have ishe onion. You don't have to say ishe. You can just say onion. How will we put that into the sentence uh, to, to translate into all of these things, right? Um, does anyone want to take a guess on this first one? I think I would say onion query. Sure. Sure. All right. Uh, that's that's completely fine. Um, next one. Who else wants to try? This is an easy one. I'm just. It's not a trick question or anything. I'm just trying to show you how simple it is. We got onion. Oye. Oye onion. There you go, Lua. It's great. Onion oye. And then. How do you think we say that? Wasn't paying attention. I made a mistake with the class. Okay. Uh, oh, are you supposed to be teaching? Oh, okay. You're back now. No problem. Pal. No. No, no. I wasn't supposed to be teaching. Uh, there is a teacher who's a partner, and she asked for a day off, and I forgot to put that on the schedule. Oh, <laughs> I, I, and she's, like, she's like, what the hell? <laughs> okay. No problem. Do you want to try this one? While we're at it, uh, you can see this one says, today I ran, today I will run. Can you guess how you would say this next one? Let me see if I can infer the pattern. <laughs> yes. This one so, says, onion, kori. Onion today. Onion so, is ran. We got that one here. I guess you missed this first rain. one. Oh, okay, onion. Okay, okay. I ran. That's uh, coincidentally the country my dad's from, Iran. Iran. Some people say that in the U.S. I it grinds my gears when people say that. Uh, so, Anyang Kori, I am running now. Anyang Kori, sure. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. You can put this wherever you want. You can say Anyang Kori. But do you Kori pronounce onion. it the same? This is uh, Ko Ur. Yeah, Anyang Ko Ur. Anyang Ko Ur. Ko Ur Anyang. Oye I Anyang. Anyang oye i, anyang kori, kori anyang. And obviously, we're not inflecting the verb, right? So it's like, oh, how do we know if it's past or present or future? It's obvious because we're, we have context. Kori means today that will come, the future of today. Oye i means the past of today, the today that already happened. And ko means now, right? So that's present, past, future. And something to notice about the future, um, you put a ne particle for the future. The future is the only thing that has something that resembles a future tense. But, you know, it's not, it's not really a future tense. It's like, it's just another word that means you're good. Like, it's like an adverb that means futurely. Futuramente. Futuramente. Eu corro. Futuramente eu corro. 
If you hear that, you would understand that this is happening in the future, right? Regardless of the fact that I said kohu in the present, because that's just how our brains work. Does anyone have any questions about this? All right. So I'll just go ahead and paste this in the chat. Um, so maybe you guys can have this. Maybe you want to copy it down for later. Um, so yeah, that ne puts things in the future, but I, I mean, from what I've learned, I don't know, I don't know that it's actually required. I don't think it's like necessary, but we use it because, you know, why not? Um, so back to the roots. So we have ishe asal sub a e ishe anyan. Transitive verb, intransitive verb, no object, right? Um, just because an intransitive verb doesn't accept an object grammatically doesn't mean that the verb can't happen to something, right? Or have some sort of indirect object. That's what we call it. So we have prepositions in Tupi and Chigo. Uh, to be honest, they're called postpositions. The, the prepositions go after the word. So I wouldn't say to you, I would say you too, right? I'm sending it uh, Brazil from instead of I'm sending it from Brazil. Think of it that way, it just goes after, it doesn't make a difference too much. Um, so first class verbs, the active verbs are gonna get these prefixes when you conjugate them. So if you have the root care, care or ked, I think they probably said care, because if you listen to people who speak Guarani, they really do sound like care, you know, but. We don't really know how they are sounding. It could be care or care. Um, a care. I slept. Ere care. You slept. Oro care. We, not you, slept. Ya care. We all slept, including you. Uh, pe care. Y'all slept. A e o care. They slept. And of course, if we put now, it means we're sleeping, past tense, right? The, the conjugation doesn't matter. It's just we can't really write this in English without conjugating. It's kind of funny, isn't it? We sleep, we sleeping, we sleep, we sleeper. Yeah, it's, it's, you got to conjugate it. Um, something you want to know is that second class verbs are never, ever going to be transitive. So if you find a transitive verb, it's always first class. It's going to get these prefixes. If it's transitive, it's getting these prefixes. No doubts. Okay, um, and it kind of goes the other way too is that second class verbs are always intransitive. It's just these, these first class um, intransitive verbs are the, are the ones that are like kind of in the middle. You know, they're, they're intransitive, but they're also active verbs. So yeah, the active stative split, just to go over this again, um, it's like an action. I run, I, I sing, I, I do these things. When we talk about like acting things, that's going to be one of these verbs. But if we're talking about a state, we're talking about the state, I'm sad, I'm hungry, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm mad, I'm remembering. It's like a state, an observable state that you're in. Um, then we're going to use these she, nde, ore, yande. Pe and e. Okay, so that sounds like shema induar. I remembered. Nde ma induar. You remembered. Ore ma induar. We remembered, but you didn't. Yande ma induar. We all remembered, including you. Pe ma induar. Uh, Y'all remembered. And i ma induar. They remembered. Any questions about this? Someone's like, what the heck is that R doing there? Everybody knows what this R is, right? Do we? What? Do we? Do we know? <laughs> I don't think you do. Um, this R is a pluriform, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna describe that in this section now. But before I describe pluriforms, uh, get out any questions you have about uh, second class, first class splits. Could be anything, grammar, whatever. All right, moving on. Pluriform. 
um, pluriform, this concept is a, is a strictly phonetic concept. Okay, so it's not going to change the meaning of a word, whether it's pluriform or not. It has nothing to do with the grammar, nothing to do with the meaning. It's just about how the letters interact with each other. And so they end up creating new sounds. That's just how the evolution of language works. In the dictionary, Navajo gives you these types of pluriforms. Um, and he puts it in front of the word. So if we search for one of them, we, we can find it. R, comma, space, S. We search for that. We're going to find a bunch of them. Acido, afiado, agudo, alegre, angistarsi. So many words. So many words. Um, but if you look at one, you'll see the R, S, I, I, ye, através de. There's a postposition. We'll talk about those later. Um, I, Ayuk, fibroso, nervo, pubis, that's great. Uh, penis, huin, that means cavalo, kind of funny, kind of funny. Uh, it's a doença venerea de homing. That's really funny, actually. Isn't that hilarious? They just call it bad penis. <laughs> uh, febri. So these are the kind of words, and I, 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 uh, I implore you to just go and read through these words, you know, like just scroll and search for words at random um, search for types of words like these pluriforms to see what they look like what they mean because that will give you an idea of the kind of things that were valuable to say uh, by the jesuits to the indigenous people in order to in order to like basically govern them and also to convert them to christianity those are the words that we've got of course we can make up new words um, in the modern time. But when we study Tupi Anchigo, unfortunately, you can't really separate it from this uh, old, outdated history. Um, so let's look at one of the Asu. Let's look at Orub. That's a great word for you guys to learn. Orub, Alegri. Uh, here, Oruba. So if you notice, Navahu um, has dictionaryized this happiness as a noun here in the middle of it hidden is an adjective form um i think it's kind of messy the way that this was kind of put about because it's really confusing like why is the adjective inside of the noun why aren't they separate once you understand how tupi and chigo works it makes a little bit more sense um adjectives and nouns and verbs are all the same thing. There's no difference. They all come from roots. A root can become a verb. A root can become a noun. A root can become an adjective. It just depends on how you inflect it. And we'll learn how to make nouns later. But the basic rule of nouns is that uh, if it ends in an A that's not tonic, if you take away the A, it becomes a stative verb. So nouns and stative verbs are the same thing. There's just an A at the end. That's the only difference. Um, so if I want to say my happiness, how do you guys think we're going to say that? Or let me, give you a, let me give you an example first. Let me switch back to text edit. Um, I've already sent you this. So if I say shit, let's, let's see if y'all can do it. Who wants to try to conjugate this? The word is orub. Orub means uh, happy. Orb. orub. Is it she oruba? She oruba. That's a good guess. So when we put the A at the end, that turns it into a noun. So if I say she oruba, that sounds like my happiness, right? My happiness. Now, if I want to say I'm happy, how do you think you might say that? Shit or loop? Yeah. Isn't that so easy? You just take away the A. That's it. I'm happy. I happy, my happy, you know? Well, it doesn't make a difference. Um, there's two Ps here. Uh, there's a problem here. 
these are pluriforms. So this is what I'm talking about. When a pluriform uh, root is put into a relationship with another root, a lot of the times, most of the times, I'll just say all the times for now, we'll learn the exceptions later. All the times that it happens, um, it's gonna gain some sort of letter. And what letter it gains is dictated by uh, these symbols here. So I made a little chart for you because it's not very clear the way that it's there. I made a little chart for you to understand. Um, absolute form, when I, I'll just define that for you, is when like a noun is just not owned by anything. A watch, the watch, right? Once it's mine, it becomes my watch. Now it's in a possessive form. But if it's not, if it's not being possessed by anything, it's not his watch, it's not their watch, it's just a watch, that's the absolute form. Does that make sense to everybody? We're just defining that term. Now, possessive is my, his, her, their, your, our watch. Okay? Or Pedro's watch, Talu's watch, Kian's watch. You can use a proper noun for possession as well. Also, this, this also applies for pro proper noun. Third person, this is also possession, but for some reason, third person... Uh, Sometimes, actually every time, gets a different letter. Um, and so I, I want to show you some examples of that. So, so now that we have this chart with us, let me go back to the text edit. Um, we know that oru is an R, S. Okay. I'll make this tiny. And so can somebody tell me... Um, so, so basically, it just... The, the root gains one of these prefixes uh, based on what type it is. So if it's an RS, then the possessive, in all these cases, it gets an R for the possession. So you don't have to think about that. Um, but it gets an S for the third person and it doesn't get anything extra for the absolute. Um, so if I were to write it like this, yeah, so who would like to try to figure out which letter goes in front of oru in a possessive context? I would guess shiroruba. Yeah. Shiroruba. Yeah, you put an R in front of it. Exactly. Shiroruba, shirorub. Um and then, what do you think it would be if I want to say, uh, let's say, he is happy. Like that. How do we say that? I just, I don't remember what the, um, what he is. All right, let's scroll <laughs> up. Something like quick. what Lewis said. Here, look up. It's the something, day, the third something, person. Something, something sort of Soruba. Uh, oh, e, e soruba. E soruba. Or, okay, good guess. E soruba. Very or good guess. Or just no e. No e, exactly. So the in the third person plur, uh, pluriform, the s is the e. It sucks up the e. It becomes the representative of the third person. So if you see an s in front of a pluriform, this is messed up. If you see an S in front of the pluriform, you automatically know it's third person. You don't even have to question, you know? You say, oh, Soruba, that's third person. Um, yeah, very good. And yeah, that's why this one is, uh, that's why it has a slash here because it's the only one that doesn't gain a letter. It actually turns into another letter, um, I to S. And this, this happens also in the first class uh, verbs in their pluriform. Like uh, here in this example, you see asal sub. Um, that S, if it wasn't pluriform, it would be an I to represent the third person. This is a third person pronoun. Um, yeah, really good job. All right, let's get uh, one from another type. So let me, that's not what I wanted to open. I gotta use my fingers to do it. Okay. Let's give you this. Here. Okay, let's do another one. Um, we'll get a T one now. Let's get a T this time. 
Oh yeah, T. So Oruba is also a T. So so this is the thing. Um, stated verbs and adjectives they 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 can't have an absolute form. So very confusingly, Navahu has said this one is R S, but this one is T. It's just because adjectives can't have an absolute form. It's not possible. I can't just say an adjective out loud. I can't say a stated verb without having some sort, you know. At that point, it's no longer a stated verb. It means something else at that point. Um, so the only reason this doesn't get a T in the absolute form is because it, there is no absolute form of non-substantials, of non-nouns. So, so when you see S dot, Make sure there's a period. That means substantivo. That means a noun. Then this T, if we go back here. Um, now, let's undo that. Let's do one more. Let's say happiness in general. How do we say that? Toruba? Yeah, Toruba with a T. So Lua exactly. was asking something that is actually my question too. Oops. If it shouldn't away. be sort of yeah. Yes. That, that was a typo. If it shouldn't be sort of, yeah. Um, let's let's copy that so just so you could see his happiness. Okay. So when you add the A it becomes possessive. When you don't have the A it becomes descriptive. Um and yeah, Toruba, this T, think of it as uh, genchi, people, in general. The happiness of people. When you see that T, try to think of it as, like that. It's not always, but it, it, uh, there's a theory for, and this is a theory, in Proto-Tupi, when we look at all the Tupian languages, not just Tupi and Chigu, and we try to go back and figure out where do these pluriforms come from, there is a theory that... Uh, the T represents something human and um, an S represents something, if, if it has it in the absolute form, because notice how there's an S here and there's a T here. In these cases, they say that the S is like a non-human or a non-animate, whereas the other one's another, but that's a little too confusing. Just think of it when you think of that, just think of like the happiness of people in general, Toruba. Um, all right, so so that covers the T, and then there's another case of this one. So let's let's do TTs as well. So another, a good one for that one is uh, Uba. Uba means a lot of things, and notice how this one not pluriform. This one is a T pluriform, and this one is a TT pluriform. So that means that when we put them in relationships, they become easier to tell apart because they're not always gonna have the same form, right? Kind of like having gendered language in Portuguese. Um, sometimes it's easier to tell what someone said because of the fact that we say o or a, uh, when the rest of the word is kind of hard to tell what happened, right? They, they help for our brains to kind of put them into boxes and say, oh, if you said o, oh, I didn't really hear the end of what you said, but I kind of heard what you said, and it kind of sounded like this word, but that's feminine, so it must be this word. Our brains do that very quickly. Uh, so they do that with the pluriforms as well. It's kind of like a gender system, if you want to think of it that way. A grammatical gender system, not a, not a human gender system. Um, so yeah, let's take uba. It means dad. Dad. And, and look, it can be an adjective, ub. You take the A away, it becomes oob. Um, that's pretty funny because, like, w what does sheroob mean? It means I have a dad. I'm dadded. I'm dadded. And, uh, yeah, we've talked about that before. So let's try and uh, put that into some possessions. It is a it is a TT. I'm going to highlight this row for you. Flip on over here. Let's send this. All right, let's do uh, uba, t, t, dad. Uh, 
let's say uh, Tupan Tuba. What does that mean? Who is Tupan? Some, I remember you saying it's some god that I don't remember. It's Christian either. god. Like, the good old Jesus it, god. Isn't that the one that they stole from something? Like one of the gods that they didn't... Yeah, it, it wasn't... That much? It wasn't necessarily a god before. It was an entity, but it was thunder. It was a, it was thunder. It just means thunder. Trovão. Oh, okay. Tupana. Uh, Tupana Tinga, right? Bright thunder. Clear thunder. So uh, they took the idea of thunder because it's so omnipresent when it happens, right? That's God. Um, so when Anchieta writes about it, he has all these different ways of using tuba and, and, and tupan together. And so when we see, let's just look at it like this. What does this mean? Tuba alone based on our chart. Like the dad of people in general, like our dad. Yes. Is that it? Um, uh, a, a dad, like the concept of a dad of a person. Yeah, someone's dad. But you notice in the third person with these TTs, for some reason, the third person also has a T. So this could also mean his or their dad. I mean, both of those things. Um, and yeah, it becomes ambiguous, right? It could be his dad or her dad. But or, or just dad, but that becomes clear based on the context. So if I want to say uh, my dad, someone tell me how that works. Sheruba. Sheruba. My dad. Let's do your dad. Oh, okay. So there's always T T. Okay. Uh, just, just tuba. No. Is it just tuba? No. De tuba. Luba. De. Ooh. I'm not seeing Lua's messages as well. So if you guys can tell me if she, if they say anything, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, she said Sheruba. Okay. And she was commenting on. Uh, God as a dad in the sense of God being a father and that being Christian coded. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, good job. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm missing. I, I need to see this chat. <laughs> I'm missing all these good answers. Okay, so Tupan Tuba. I said something when you were talking about Uba because my dad's name is Urban and oh, yeah. his nickname was Urba and I grew up calling him Uba. Whoa! <laughs> you literally speak Tupi. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, but so now, now you're gonna call him Sheruba. You gotta call him Sheruba now. It's gonna find it funny. Sheruba, and yeah, Tupan Tuba. So Tupan Tuba. This is a genitive relationship. A genitive relationship. Do you guys have you ever heard that word before? Genitive. Genitive just means. Um, we we're creating a possession we're creating a relationship once something comes from something else so it's like in english if i say like rock river what does that mean what is a rock river oh so when you use a subject as a, an adjective yeah that means rio de pedra right it, it's basically this it's this g but the g is hidden and you switch the order does that make sense? Switch the order. Instead of saying... So to be the same thing, you just switch the order and you use... Just like English. Yeah. River of rocks. That would look like... Uh, ita... U, which some people think that... Ita... Itau comes from that. I don't think it does. Maybe it does. Yeah, it could. Yeah, Itau. That means rock... River. Rio Pedrado, right? River, river rock. So, so this, if we have Tupan Tuba, what does that mean? I think Lua probably said it. Let me see if I can. 
I get this. God is dad in the sense that God is the father. Yeah, it's it's very much like that. It's very much like that. So so it's the genitive. It's basically saying uh, uh, Tupan, God, Tuba, uh, father of people. Right? God, father of people. Well, it's like pretty intense, huh? Now what, what happens if I say this? Tupan, Ruba. What is that? I don't know. I thought Uba was always like the, the letter that would be added would always be a T. Well, look at the chart. Uh, yeah, that's what I was uh, not sure because when when there's a TT, so that means that it's not actually TT, it's TRT. Yes, yes, because Navajo had his own brain going when he made his dictionary. That's why I gave you a chart. <laughs> mm. These will become natural. There's there's only four types. You'll you'll and they're like variations of each other. Once you learn, once you see the word a few times in the text, you'll. You'll get it, you know, but it's just one of those things. One of those things, that's what happens when you have a natural language. If we had con constructed language, right, we could get rid of all these and just say, no, we have a, a standard rule. But So, tutupan ruba, it's, it's a possession, right? It's a possession with God. So, what does that mean? The God of Father? No, the Father of God. God's Father. Think of this R God's as like father. an apostrophe S. God's Father. It shows um, possession. It shows possession. Um, if I... It, yeah, so let's write that. So Tupan, uh, God's Father, right? So, so who is God's Father? That would be the big God, right? As opposed to the little one, which would be... Uh, Tupan, ra, ura, ra, ura. Let's go look at. Let's go look for this word in the dictionary. Ra, ura. Let me take away the r. When we search in the dictionary, we can't search with the pluriform. A, ura. It means semen. But it also means son. There is no difference between a son and semen. It's the same. Thing, right <laughs> there's no difference um, so uh, it means son when we and, and it's also a TT just like tuba um, because it's a family member so there's obviously some pattern here with how they chose these pluriforms but we have not yet cracked the code one day maybe I'll do it we'll figure it out Tupang Raura Filho de Deus God's son right so, the, so in Christianity, it's important to have a difference between God as a father and God as a son. God as a son is Jesus. God as a father is the thing, you know, Godfather. And then, uh, you know, Espiritu Santo, Spartu Santo. It's always correcting it. Uh, Espiritu Santo is, is, for some reason, uh, I guess... There were some things that Anchieta thought were just too holy to translate into this savage language. So if you read the Tupi text, he actually just writes the Spiritu Santo. So you have the, the God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that's how they're referred to in the text. All right. And so what if we write Tupang, Tupang Ruba? What do you think that might mean? It's not absolute, it's not possessive, it's not third person, it's none of those things. We're not giving it any sort of pluriform, we're just using the root. At this point, this is kind of like, like an actual adjective. This is what we call a composition. So this is something that I haven't taught you yet. But I'm just giving you a sneak peek. There is a way to say tupang uba, 
and we, and we would just write it as a uh, one word we would write it like this tupanuba we put that you take the n out of the a and put it that, back down because we don't like to have we don't like to have vowels next uh well you can actually have vowels next to it but it just makes sense tupanuba that would be uh fatherly god <laughs> Something like that, you know, like a, it's an adjective. It's a, it, he's a dad, he's a dad god, you know, as opposed to a father of people, which is what the absolute form will have you kind of think. Um, but I'm going to write it like this, even though I would write it the other way, just so that you can understand uh, and it doesn't get confusing. So yeah, that covers that. Any questions about that before I send it off to you? No, nope. all clear, all clear, good. Very clear language. Very clear and logical. Okay, and the last one is uh, SRS. I don't know if it's worth looking at these. There's literally 11 of these. Only 11, like, and, you know, let's look at them. There's not even 11. How many is this? There's like three. There's three. You learn all of these now. Like you're never, this is literally nothing. There's oba, right? Folia. We have coisa miuda. You see in. Apo. This is probably the one that we use the most. Apo. Haiz. Because we talk about mandioca. We talk about all these things. Uh, roots that we eat. Um, so so this, is a, this is an important one. So let's look at it. Let's go to the, let's use apo. Haiz. Root. As our last example. Okay. Apo. SRS. Root. Tour. Root. Tour. <laughs> root. Uh, okay. So let's do um, a root. What is a root? Based on the uh, an absolute root. How do I say that? Looking right here. Sapo. Yeah. Sapo. I thought that meant frog. Sapo. Um, a root, right? And so that goes back to what I was talking to Tupinizano about the fact that it's an S and not a T. It's an it's it's like a non human it's a non animate thing. But that's not a rule. Don't don't put that in your brain too hard. It's just kind of a loose thing. Um, now we want to say my root. Lou was asking if sipo comes from this. No, sipo is its own word, but it is to pee. You can just search these words. You'll find them. Sipo. Sipo wasu. Sipo grande. It literally means sipo. Like, uh, it's the name of the animal. Sipo. Pretty cool, huh? Mateus is, uh, he already left. He had class, but he's he's writing a poem right now using words in Portuguese that come from Tupi and he's kind of changing their meaning a little bit using them in different ways I'm excited to see how it turns out I'm gonna write it one side in Portuguese one side in Tupi but it has like the same words in it we'll see how that looks let's go all right uh, sapo let's do the last two um, my root Or better yet, we don't really say my root, right? This is like a natural thing. Uh, let's talk about the root of the tree. Um, tree is ubuda, like ibira puera. Ubuda. Ubuda. I think it's ubuda. Let's see. We can search for these things. Arvuri. Ubuda. Yeah. Ubuda. And then we want to put it in the uh, possessive form. The possessive form is always R. It's always R for pluriform roots. Is it Sapporo Buddha? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. It's Ubuda and then possessive after that. Oh, Louis said Ubuda Rappo. Yeah. Good job, Lu. Ubuda Rappo. Aiz Ba. Oh, writing in English. Root of the tree. Very good. And then uh, his root, their root. That thing's root, that that root, um, it, it's the same as sapo because it's an S S R S. So there's 
one form that doesn't get an absolute. There's one form that gets a T for an absolute. There's another form that gets a T for the third person. And then there's another form that does S's for both of those. This one is like literally, apo is probably the only word you'll ever actually say, unless you want to talk about uh, those other two words. Um, but other than that, um, that's it. That's what pluriforms are. If you don't see one of these symbols, you construct it the same exact way, but it just doesn't get that R, right? So it would be like, um, you know, Shema Induara, my memory. Nema Induara, you don't add anything extra. So that's it. Any questions? Class is over. Let me stop my screen. Um, are the, do the diacritics represent the same thing as in Portuguese, like the... Like a, like a closed and an open and... vowel? Yeah. I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. Um, I think not. We just use it for accents, right? Uh, if you happen to use an open or closed vowel, feel free to do that, one or the other. Like, I don't hear the difference because, you know, as good as Portuguese as I get, for some reason, that's something that I can't say properly or hear. Uh, tell me if I'm doing it. Avô, avó. Sounds right. Okay. I guess you got it. That's it. You're when I'm talking fast, it, I, 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 don't, I don't make a difference. So... So for me, it doesn't make a difference. For you guys, uh, if it does, go ahead. But um, I think over time, as you talk, you'll get your own tupi ear, and maybe you'll listen to other people talk. These kind of things weren't recorded, whether it was open or closed. I don't know if those were even considered in the 16th century. I don't even think linguists had concepts of those things. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So my, my question, I guess, was what what do they mean like if, if there is a diacritic does that mean that that's the stress syllable yeah yeah and, oh. and and the other thing the the main uh the biggest rule for the diacritic is um so so this diacritic forget the name the hat that's always just means a semi-vowel that's either a y or a w sound um yeah and what there was only two letters that get those and uh this one at the end like ubera remember how i told you that if you take away the a at the end you can get uh, a stative verb, but if it's an a, you know, if it's if it's tonic, you can't do that. The stative verb just stays the same. You don't you don't have to change it. The verb and the noun are the same exact form. Uh, you only have to take it away when it's a it's a non-tonic a. If it's a vowel or a tonic a, then it's good. You can use it as a verb or a noun, and the context will tell us whether it's a verb or a noun. Um, but things like ubera, technically you can't use them as stative verbs because uh, they're not possessible. Uh, in tupi mindset, I can't have a tree. The tree is a living thing that's right there next to me. I can't have it. It's there, you know? When I cut it down, I can have the wood. I can have ubera puera, what used to be a tree, ibira puera, right? That's what that means. What used to be a tree, you know, a dead tree, wood, something like that. That can be mine. But I can't have a living tree. So we can't use them as stative verbs either. We, we can't use them to describe ourselves. I would have to say I have what used to be a tree. All right. Any more questions? Remarks? Reflections? I guess I have one quick I don't know if it was a quick question, but uh, about time. the, the I forgot what they're called, the approximants, the, the ones that have the hat. Yeah, uh, the, the semi-vowels. Semi-vowels, yeah. Uh, so I've been looking them up a little bit because I was curious about some things about them. Yeah. And one thing I've seen in some places, and I'm not sure if that's just a notation thing, sometimes I see the, the Y with the hat on it. Is that a difference? Oh, yeah. That, that also exists. It's just kind of hard to type, so we don't always write it. But... Um... But yeah, that also exists. The Y does that too. So the 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 I, the 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 ya, the wa, and the uh, uh. sounds like that. Uh. Uh. Yeah, that okay, happens yeah. in the word aplaba, and I can't I can't actually write it with my keyboard, but uh, I always copy and paste it. It's such a pain in the ass. But imagine there's a hat on that Y. It'd be aplaba, 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 aplaba. Like that. That's super weird. Okay. 
Super, yeah, super I was trying to see like how that's pronounced because I could like wrap my my head around yeah, it. Yeah, it's but it's like a, a wow. <laughs> it because yeah, it's it's not a easy for us. I'll say that it's not easy for us. Um, and you know, like uh, Homildo, the book that I sent you guys, he Tupi Potiguara, they made the decision to get rid of all the diacritics except for the accent markers. You know. So he writes it, um, he would write the same words that I write without the hats. He just writes the U's and the I's. And, you know, for him, it's like, you know, if we're using this daily, we should understand what's what, 